Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. And today's video I think is gonna be really helpful for a lot of people who may be currently using mascara or if you're getting ready to purchase things to look out for if you're having issues, things that might help you. So I get asked so many times a day about different issues, whether um, I'm your artist or if you have another artist and you're still having trouble wanting to th this makeup to work for you, but you don't know what the problem is, I have become an expert in troubleshooting techniques. So I'm gonna talk about troubleshooting today. Um, I'm gonna talk a lot about the three most important things when we're talking about, or the three most, I guess, biggest issues when it comes to troubleshooting um, and then we're gonna break it down from there and I'm gonna tell you all about how to fix your problems and I'm going to try to show you as best I can um, some of these issues and some things about this makeup that makes it different than others and why it's so important to have a knowledge about how pro the product works before you apply it for the first time, if that makes sense. So if you wanna see all of my tips and tricks, keep watching, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button um, so I can make more videos for y'all. So thanks for being here and keep watching. All right, let's get into it. So I have three main things that if these three things you've got covered, you're not gonna have any trouble that needs to be troubleshooted, okay? So number one, the most important thing that I tell all of my clients to be ready for before you get this makeup, and this is not even just for mascara makeup, this is for any makeup. And you guys probably can guess what I'm gonna say. <laughs> the first thing that you need to make sure you got covered is skin, okay? So mascara is a cream. No makeup goes on dry flaking skin very smoothly, right? We could all we can all agree on that. But with mascara, it can enhance, I feel like all makeup does, especially powders, but it can enhance that dry skin look if you're not exfoliated. So I always recommend exfoliating. I exfoliate every three days. I'm kind of weird about it. It's good for your skin as long as you're using a gentle exfoliator, but you wanna make sure you're exfoliating at least weekly. I recommend two times a week minimum, and then using a good moisturizer at night. So when you wake up in the morning, your skin is moisturized because your skin will do most of its repair during the night. So if you're not putting on a, lo like a lotion or a night cream, before bed, you're wasting all that precious time that your skin could be absorbing, all that goodness. So, if you're exfoliated and if you have moisturized skin, your makeup will not emphasize texture that's not already there. Now, any makeup in general is going to emphasize texture if the texture is there. So, we're wanting to make sure we have a smooth, clean, flawless, I don't wanna say flawless, because it's not necessarily flawless. I mean, come on, I am coming at you, no makeup. It is far from flawless, but my skin I know is smooth, exfoliated, and moisturized, and I am ready to go with my makeup. So, skin is number one. All right, so I'm gonna skip on, and I'm gonna do the more difficult one last. So. Third is, well, I call it third, whatever. Second is going to be application. Okay, so this makeup is very different than other makeup. And I always say the number one issue people experience is using too much product. You're so used to having to use a lot of foundation or concealer to really give good coverage in this makeup is not that case. It, it is just the opposite. You want to use as little product as necessary to give you that coverage that you want. So when I say build it up in thin layers, 
That does not mean like digging your brush into the creams, putting it on and then wondering why you are sticky, tacky, if you're getting creasing, if it's settling into fine lines, all of those things you're using too much. I did the same thing because you're just not used to using a product like this. I totally get it. But if you're going through a 10 um, of your main highlight color in a week or two, you're using way too much. Um, it should take much, much longer. Making sure you are building up in thin layers, all right? Making sure you are using that damp perfector to, to remove excess will really help you if you're feeling sticky. Um, what also really helped me was using a setting spray. Now this is gonna be dependent upon your skin type. Our stay spray is best for normal to dry skin. If you're an oily girl, there are other ones made that are more mattifying, that are more oil controlling, that are really gonna help you. Urban Decay, D Slick, and All Nighter are two of my faves. Okay, setting spray. Also, a powder, okay? So my number one issue was I felt sticky. Now, if your artist did not tell you, it takes two to three weeks, depending on your skin type, for your skin to adjust to creams. Now, this is because your skin is either used to a liquid or a powder foundation, which are both drying your skin instead of moisturizing. So a little bit about creams is that they actually sit on top of your skin and they, they actually hold moisture in your skin. So it's not letting out any moisture and it's not absorbing and like actually pulling moisture from the environment. It's like keeping all that stuff out and keeping all the goodness in. So you're gonna notice an increase in moisture to your skin. And that's just the nature of creams. That being said, it takes, if you have normal skin, I was normal combination skin. It took at least two weeks before I realized, okay, I'm not sticky or tacky anymore. My skin has adjusted to that extra moisture level in Granted, it, I tried it in the middle of the summer, so that was much different, but what helped me was trying the Stay Setting Spray and using a powder until that adjustment period was over. Then I no longer needed that extra powder to take away that tacky feeling, okay? I was also using too much. So there's quite a few things that can make you have that feeling, um, and you kind of have to try and see what your issue is. I was having all of them. So know that your skin, if you are oily, it will take even longer for your skin to adjust to creams. Okay, okay another reason why you could be feeling sticky um, or if your makeup doesn't seem to, if it kind of feels like it's sliding off, how long did you wait to, when you put your moisturizer on, how long did you wait before you applied your makeup? So you wanna make sure it's completely absorbed a good 20 minutes dry dry to the touch that then you're not trying to put your makeup on over like tackiness because no makeup's gonna sit well on that, especially cream on cream, right? So that is another thing to look out for. I like to just apply my sunscreen while I'm brushing my teeth, it's absorbing, and then I am good to go by the time I'm done and ready to apply my makeup. So the last part of application is the brush you're using. So your artist should have um, gave you a recommendation based on the way you like to wear your makeup and what kind of brush is best for you. But sometimes just them giving you a brush doesn't mean that you know exactly how to use it. So there's a lot of different methods depending on if you want a more natural finish. I always tell my girls, if you want a natural finish, think these brushes, actually there's one more, any of these ends of these brushes and think buffing motion. Buffing motion means you are literally buffing it into your skin, okay? Natural finish. If you want a more full coverage finish, I recommend any of these brushes, same thing but a pressing, stippling, I mean, what else can I call it? This is stippling, okay? Pressing it into the skin. 
it's going to actually give you a more fuller coverage, okay? And then I like to call it like push and feather. So I'm kind of pushing it in the skin and I'm lightly feathering it out to blend. I'm not buffing this brush. I mean, some of these brushes just don't work with buffing, but pressing it in, feathering it out, really light touches, letting the brush do the work for you. Sometimes is all it is is just too much pressure, swiping, um, just doesn't work well, I feel like with this makeup. If you're seeing streaks um, or just kind of pulling the makeup as you go, it's because you're swiping. Um, so try to avoid those certain motions and you're gonna get a much better application of your cream. Okay, so the third and final, the big one that I think is the biggest issue um, and it's honestly because this makeup is different is color issues. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys as good as I can why this makeup's different and you can't just slap a lighter color on all over your face, why you really need to look and study your skin um, because if you're having issues in certain areas of your face and not others, this is really gonna explain to you why. So this, as an, a trained, experienced artist, this is what I look for when you send me your selfie. Um, I'm looking to whether you need any sort of color correction instead of just giving you one color to cover your whole face, I'm really looking to match the tones of your skin and correct colors if needed. If you have redness, hyperpigmentation, dark circles, those kind of things, you m might possibly need more colors in order to give you the look that you want that mascara is famous for. So I'm going to try to try to show you guys on myself what it is that makes this makeup so different. Okay, and if you've been following me on Instagram stories, you've probably heard some of this before, um, but I realized, you know what? I need to put this all in one place for a good reference for my girls. So, all right, mascara highlights. So, highlights are where the biggest issue is, and this is because this is the color that is going to give you the most coverage, balance out your skin tone, and minimizing all that redness, and darkness and things that we don't want showing on our skin, right? So we have a lot of colors. They aren't like typical foundation to where you find the one that's closest to your skin and you slap it on and everything is beautiful and flawless. It just is a little bit more difficult than that and that's why there's artists. Okay, so I'm gonna swatch some colors for you guys and hopefully you'll be able to see some of the issues you might be seeing on your skin. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see, I swatched what, one, two, three, four, five colors and Three of these are my actual colors, but you can see how different they are on the skin. So if you ever meet up someone for an in-person color match, they might be swatching your face up and blending it out to see what works. Okay. So this is how I do an in-person color match. I am looking for the three most close to your skin tone colors, and I'm going to see how they sit on your skin. Okay. If they are emphasizing texture not already there, it's too light, okay? If it's emphasizing your pores, really like sticking in your pores, making them look huge, it's too light. Now the number one issue with this makeup is that people get color matched way too light, okay? Um, it is better looking on your skin, I promise, to wear slightly too dark than too light. Too light just gives you a whole host of problems, whereas going a little bit darker, maybe wearing, because again, you need so little this product, 
you could buff it in to where it really matches because you're not using so much product, okay? So, whereas some of these look too dark for me, if I buff them into the skin and are using small amounts like I should be, you guys, they work just fine. Now these lighter ones, I don't know if you can even see, you can see every single pore <laughs> on my skin, the way it just sticks. Can you see that? I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'll try to take a picture and show you. Okay, it's so hard to show in, a, in the camera what it looks like in real life, but take my word on it, these not so pretty, okay? So, the things to look for when it is the wrong color, okay? It's either, like I said, enhancing texture, pores, um, fine lines are not something that's just gonna get blurred away. If, if it's making them look a lot worse, then it's a color issue but they're not gonna go away with any makeup. I'm sorry, it stinks. Trust me, I, I get it in the same way. Okay, if it is washing you out or looks too yellow on you, it's the wrong color. If, and this is the biggest one, you are wearing your makeup hours and hours and it is wearing off super quick. This makeup is the one makeup that I've ever been able to wear literally all day, like from 6 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night, and it's still on, okay? If you're getting to like a few hours later and like say your nose has nothing left on it and it's worn off, that's because it's a color issue. Too light of a highlight wears off super quick. No matter if you're setting it, using a primer, any of those things, if the color is not correct, it won't wear like normal mascara should wear, okay? That is a big one. So when people come to me and are like, it's wearing off, it won't stick, it won't stay. It's a color issue. And normally it's because parts of your face, can you tell my nose is so much darker than the rest of my face, need a darker color underneath. And that's when we're gonna get into color correction and I'll be, and I will get to that in a second. Same goes with contour. So highlights the main thing that we have issues with color correction and, and getting the right colors. But contour, if you are putting on your contour and it's making you look orange, it's too warm. You need a cooler toned contour, okay? If it is making you look dead, and I don't know how else to describe it besides dead, like it's too gray, you need a warmer contour. And if it's making you look dirty, it need a warmer contour. If it's not blending, you more than likely need a warmer contour. Okay, so usually if you're having blending issues, all that, you need a different color. Um, sometimes there's some that like, it almost blends out patchy, that is a color issue, okay, when it comes to contour. But contours are much more universal, so that's less of an issue. Um, the main thing with contour is if you have a lot of redness in this area, steer clear of warm contours. If you're freckled like me, I cannot wear stone. It is much too warm. It just blends in with my freckles, so you need a cooler contour. Okay, back to highlights. Here is the thing about highlights. Okay, if you get mul if you get matched to multiple highlight colors, always use the darkest color first, okay? And here's why. So, say I'm gonna go in with my brightener color. Okay, I'm gonna show you right here. Okay, this is my brightener. Hopefully you guys can see just how horrible washed out and how that is in every one of my pores. Can you guys see that? Okay, same thing, but this time I am going to use a darker highlight first, just in that area, and then I'm gonna go in with my brightener. Can 
Can you tell the difference of how it's sitting on my skin? It's not settling into pores. It doesn't look washed out. It is technically the same color, but I color corrected that area of my face with more redness first. Okay, so when we talk about color correction, we not necessarily are matching exactly the color under, but we are using a color to use the color wheel and counteract that color. The best example of this and the most issue I normally see is with under eyes. So I'm gonna show you guys um, a couple of different options for doing a color correction on the under eyes and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how I color correct for my redness. So redness, darkness, um, blemish spots, so like which are normally red, okay? All of that really is good when you're using something with an orange undertone. So you can probably tell from these colors which one are more orange. So we got amber, mango, and then all the way up into the really dark skinned con um, highlights. And depending on your skin tone, depends on like which ones you might need. So I could start with amber if that was close to my skin tone, it's going to kind of show through a little bit because honestly, those are so dark. I need a darker highlight. So going over with mango is enough to take away that darkness. So my spot of hyperpigmentation, I always use mango to take it away. Okay. Then I can go in and <laughs> address my nose. So I pretty much have redness here. My nose is always darker. I have a little bit of darkness on my chin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my finger and show you guys. So I can literally take the smallest amount and just gently press it on that area, okay? Before I take my normal color okay so this is mango and i'm just going to press it right where i have that redness i have it around my nose and right on my cheeks sometimes i use my brush sometimes i just use my finger and then my nose is darker so i am only one shade lighter than this color but if i don't use mango it doesn't last as long on my nose okay and this is an issue a lot of people have, like they're darker on certain parts of their face. You might say, oh my gosh, I do not wanna buy another whole color just to do this, but it makes the biggest difference. And trust me, this little tin is gonna last you years because you're barely touching into it. And color correction will make you love your makeup that much more, I promise. So, um, I forgot about this little guy. I shouldn't say little. This big guy, or two, how many are there? Um, and just because you might not be as dark complected, well, I'm not actually good dark complected, self tanned as I am, um, doesn't mean you can't wear mango. Even the lightest girls, you can wear mango, but since you've kind of color corrected, then you put on your color that matches your skin tone over that and then it's going to blend in like a dream. So let's go ahead and do the under eyes and then I'll show you how I put my makeup on over that. So two options, these are my two favorite options for dark circle under eye correction. Now, I don't have, I have a lot of purple. I don't really have like brown dark circles. I have more purple, thin skin. You can see my veins, okay? So for purple, and it works really good for darkness as well, this is Frenchie, which is a lip and cheek color. And I know it sounds crazy, but if you've ever seen color correctors in the makeup world, peach is used for dark darkness, okay? And it's because it has that orange undertone. So I'm gonna take Frenchie, and I am literally just gonna take a very 
light layer and I make sure I get up in here in this corner where I'm very purple and I'm just gonna put on a light layer of Frenchie okay so that minimized my purpleness like immediately okay mango is very similar in undertone and it works the same way and mango I just I like it better because it's already in my compact for all my other <laughs> darkness issues, which I feel like this is slightly better wear time for me, but it is closer to my natural skin tone, so I feel like it works well. So, mango and Frenchie, okay? That's all two seconds and your under eyes are concealed. Now, if you have much darker under eyes, um, you might have to go up in color. So this is mango, okay? Then it goes goddess papaya cinnamon. And some girls with super dark underneath their eyes, you guys, it might sound crazy, but you can literally use cinnamon, okay? And then you're just going to use that perfector Make sure you don't have too much, and then you're gonna go in with your normal color over that, and it is seriously magic. Okay, so my biggest thing when people are then going in with their normal colors is you have to be mindful that you just put a color corrector down. So I, you'll always see me stippling my makeup on, always, because I'm always covering things underneath, and I am just in a really good habit of never pulling my brush. I don't ever swipe on, okay? And the reason for that is because you don't wanna move the product underneath. So I'm gonna go in with Sandy, which is my normal color, okay? And I'm going to press that right on, right over that. And you will not see peach left whatsoever because this matches my normal skin tone. Okay, so then it's super easy. You just take your all over color, okay? So I like to call this with my clients your main highlight shade. I like to put this over where I've color corrected and get it to where it's matching the rest of my face. And I feel like I get better coverage that way than when I just go in with my color corrector and then I just go right on top of that and try to brighten, I don't get as good a coverage, okay? And also, it depends on the type of coverage you want. So, I already have some coverage on my nose from the mango, but I don't want my nose to stick out darker than the rest of my face. So, I go in really lightly with my all over highlight color. Okay, now if you need to kind of swipe more on areas where you did no color correction, that's okay. You'll see in certain areas, I know my face very well by now and I know where I put that mango and where I didn't. Okay, so. Now, if you are a girl that has no need for color correction, first of all, I'm jealous. Um, second of all, you don't have to apply highlight where you contour if you don't need it. So I normally apply it all the way through my cheek area because I tend to pull slightly red there with my contour if I don't. But you don't have to apply it here or here if you don't need to. So feel free to skip it. Um, because our contour also gives coverage. Then I go in and I brighten in exactly the same way. I just go down quite a few shades and I like to use Aura because I have those purple tones and Aura has more yellow in it, which counteracts that purple. And I feel like it gives me the best brightness without pulling me, what's the word? Um, it doesn't look dry. It doesn't make me look super crepey. Anything like that, especially under my eyes. It is a very sensitive area. So, if you have really dark circles, you want to go all the way up to get rid of that darkness. Make sure you're lightening 
those inside corners, okay? If you don't have super dark circles, but you're just wanting to brighten, um, maybe you have more mature skin and this area looks crepey if you put too much, concentrate it right here at the side of your nose, okay? You can go out here and you don't have to go all the way up to your um, lower eyelid, okay? But, con but just keeping that concentration of brightness right here, the side of your nose and kind of on this fat part of your cheek gives you that brightening um, that you want without getting too much there that's going to collect in your lines, okay? Because I know that happens to me as well. So I'm going to then brighten on top of my forehead, top of my chin, right in the center, and then a little bit down my nose, okay? You can even do your cupid's bow. Now, for me, if I would apply my brightener straight there without getting that back to like to my normal shade first, it looks so dry and I see every little pore on my skin, okay? That's the importance of really, you are looking to address what I've heard called it's contrast in your skin. Okay, dress that contrast, make sure you're all matching, make sure you have really color corrected what you need to, then your main highlight's gonna go on like butter. And if it doesn't, you need a new color, okay? So also, if you're like me and you're using three highlight shades, the Perfector is your best friend. Um, the makeup does not look the same without it. This is so different than a beauty blender. You really have to feel it in order to believe it um, and try it. Something about it works with our makeup like no other. So pressing this in is really going to take away that textured look as well. So if you're feeling like you still see texture or you look like it looks makeup-y to you, using the perfector is what saves me because we just layered three highlights. Now, you can also do where you apply, perfect, apply the next shade, perfect. Um, let's just be real, I'm lazy and this is quicker for me. It just takes a little bit longer perfecting at the end to make sure, but that is how I cover my dark circles and that's what I look like without contour. I need contour. So, okay, so my last tip for under eyes, besides the perfector, making sure you don't have any creams in your creases or your under eyes is using a setting powder to set it. So this makeup does not dry down and set like a liquid does. It doesn't set unless you put something on it to set it, like a setting powder. So I'm a huge fan of our Vanilla Dust just because it is such a very finely milled powder, okay? Like, it's just, it's not too heavy to where it's going to um, make you look cakey. So the biggest thing on your under eyes is using a finely milled powder. If you um, have oily skin and need to set, I recommend using a loose powder for the rest of your face, but this is great for under the eyes. You can either put it on with your perfector, which I find um, sometimes adds a little too much for my liking. Um, I'm really just set on this power powder brush because I can gently touch it. I get a very even distribution of the powder and I can press out, make sure I have no creasing and then go straight under the under eye and press it in that triangle. And I know that's going to be set and I'm not going to have any creasing through the day. Okay. So that is our under eye issue. Okay, my very last troubleshooting issue is which I don't hear very often because I feel like this makeup actually does improve your skin over time. I know it did mine, but if you're experiencing breakouts, 
Now, this makeup does not clog your pores, and I'm, I swear I'm working on a video about ingredients and why creams are so amazing for your skin, but in the meantime, just trust me when I say creams are too large to go into your pores. So if you're having breakouts, more than likely it is not the makeup, okay? More than likely it's your brushes, okay? Because brushes can harbor bacteria and if you're not cleaning them normally, you might notice that you have a breakout in your contour area and think it's your contour when in fact it's the brush you're using to apply your contour. So my last troubleshooting tip is make sure you are washing your brushes, something like Restore that actually kills bacteria is a game changer because then you never have to worry about your brushes breaking you out again if you know they're clean. It's a miracle. Right. Hopefully that covered. I feel like I could talk so much longer on this subject because I hear so many questions about it, but I think that covered for the most part troubleshooting ideas that um, you can figure out for yourself or if you're still having trouble, don't hesitate reaching out to me and I'd love to help you out. So remember when the seasons are changing, your skin changes um, you might need to shade up and get a darker shade if your makeup's no longer setting the way it used to. If you're not getting the coverage you want, you might really benefit from a color corrector. Even if you don't think you have redness or um, any of those other things I mentioned, sometimes you have darkness in certain areas of your face that you've probably never even noticed before. And that's where an artist can come in and tell you, look, if you're needing better coverage in these certain areas, this is what you need to do. And it is a game changer in the way your makeup applies and the way it looks. And I want everyone to get that amazing mascara look that they're after. So I am happy to help. If you haven't gotten it down yet, just message me and I'll be happy to make my suggestions of what I think might help you out. Um, if there's anything I didn't cover, please ask below. I'm sure I've forgotten a lot of things because yeah, it's a, it's a big subject to cover. Just be sure you got your skin prepped and ready. You are not applying too much. I picked out the right brush for the type of coverage you want. Don't forget to play around with setting techniques, different primers, different setting powders, setting sprays. Um, finding one that you really love is a game changer. And then obviously, if you think you have a color issue, reach out to your artist or me and let's get that fixed. There's a no pressure return policy. If you try a color such as mango, which I love, but maybe you wouldn't love it, you have 30 days to return it, full refund, or 60 days to exchange it for another color. So try some things, experiment, have fun with it. Makeup is fun. And I want you to love your makeup as much as I do because it is seriously the best feeling when you've got your application down. You can apply it in five minutes and you feel absolutely fabulous afterwards. I mean, it's like you can conquer the world, right? All the confidence. Okay, so <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this answers some questions for you. If it didn't, let me know. And I love you guys. Bye.